Apex Legends Season 19 Ignite patch notes have dropped, so I'll be covering everything right here. There are some pretty hefty meta changes as well as some big gameplay additions. Thanks to EA for the sponsor on this one. First I'll cover the legend and weapon meta changes, then the new map and legend, and then map rotation, cross progression, and other changes like ranked adjustments. The number one biggest feature besides Conduit, which we'll talk about later, is the new Nessie room hidden in the Storm Point map update. I won't spoil much, but it's in the new Watson Town Takeover called Pylon and is filled to the brim with Watson lore and Easter eggs. The hemlock got a nerf, it does 21 damage now, instead of 22. The bow check got buffed, it now has a faster draw speed, select fire for shatter caps and better shatter caps hip fire spread. The charge rifle has less bullet drop and a bigger bullet size. The longbow and sentinel also have a beefier bullet now. The 30-30 got a hip fire nerf and each consecutive shot will have increased spread. Respawning is changing in Apex Season 19. When you get eliminated, the game will remember what armor and weapons you had. And when you spawn, you'll be immediately given the armor level and weapons you had previously, along with two stacks of ammo for each weapon. Care package weapons don't count, and I hope they thought of a way to stop people duplicating their armor off drop. We'll have to see. The Digi Threat doesn't rotate into the Crafter anymore, which goes nicely alongside the Bangalore nerfs to absolutely obliterate her chance of ever being relevant in the meta again. More on that later. The R301 and Vault will go into the Crafter, and the RE45 and Repeater will come out. The Turbocharger does not reduce damage of the Havoc and Devotion anymore, so big win for energy lovers. The Oddstar is also on the floor now, and it has improved stats over the last time it was on the ground. And in its place, the Wingman has gone into the Care Package with higher base damage and the Skull Piercer Elite Hop-Up, which ignores helmet protection entirely. Catalyst got nerfed, and it was a big one. Her walls have about 3 seconds less duration, and the ult charge now starts after the wall goes down, instead of immediately after casting it. The tactical can only be placed twice at once, instead of three, and the bullets can now go through the core, damaging those behind it. The throwing range is a lot less, although still miles further than any other controller legend. Bangalore got nerfed like we talked about earlier. Smokes are about 5 seconds shorter. The alt missile slowing effect is shorter, and her passive duration is shorter. Some Something else that's shorter is the distance between now and the time I reach 1 million subscribers if you hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much for the support my friends. Wraith is short too, but we all knew that. You might not know though that she got a buff. Her passive should now be more reliable and faster at providing information. Pathfinder can now scan packages to reset his zipline cooldown even if his teammates already scanned the package. Newcastle will now jump higher with his ultimate and can pull out his weapon faster once landed. Vantage gets 6 bullets for a full ultimate instead of 5. Revenant's got a bit of a nerf for ranked KP. It's a bit confusing, so here it is from Apex's game designer. This next big change is a big deal for ALGS, but doesn't matter so much for everyone else. Alright, that was a lot of quickfire changes. Now, let's get to the fun new features. First, Conduit. A brand new Filipino character with a very interesting backstory. Her big sister was struggling to take care of her big family. So she looked to the Apex games, something she's been a fan of, for a long time as a way to make some money. The way she managed to get some abilities was from the radioactive battery of a titan that had saved the town many years ago. She went to that monarch and took it apart and made abilities out of it, but as a result she was poisoned by the radioactive battery and doesn't have long left to live. She's a support legend that can use her tactical to provide temporary shields to damage teammates catch up to her teammates with a speed boost from her passive and place down a massive energy barrier that stuns and damages enemies that try to walk through it. Like any legend, just knowing their abilities is never enough to know how well they're going to do in the meta and I have played Conduit quite a lot and you know I have my own opinions on how she'll fit into the meta. She is a decent support legend, she's the only support legend that has healing abilities that are really effective mid-combat whereas people like Gibraltar, Gibby and Lifeline, their abilities really come into power when you're team is already down on the ground so it's going to feel really rewarding to have some abilities that you can use actively during combat. However the downside to this is that to be really effective with Conduit's abilities you're going to need to have good communication with your team. The tactical does provide a lot of bonus shields temporarily but if you use it at the wrong time it's basically useless whereas healing someone with a Newcastle res is super straightforward and helpful in many situations. Conduit's going to be better for the high level, in my opinion, especially maybe in pro level play or where you have a team of three coordinating together. We'll have to see how she fits in the meta though. Storm Point got some major updates. It's smaller now, which should help speed up the mid game. New locations include Watson's Pylon, which replaces Antenna. 
This place is a massive vertical zipline paradise. It's going to be great for anyone who loves movement and is honestly a massive upgrade to antenna. You're not punished for falling down to the area below like you are an antenna and instead can find many layers of loot at areas to escape. But overall holding the high ground is going to have some pretty nice benefits and I honestly can't wait to play this map. It's definitely going to be a new hot drop location on Stormpoint. I definitely think Pylon is probably the highlight of the new Stormpoint map update, but there are so many other new places to explore that are really going to mix up gameplay and just balance things, especially in the mid game. Most of these locations either replace somewhere which is basically nothing or rework areas of the map that had some pretty bad problems. For example, the Praladen is now gone and we just have this place called Forbidden Zone, which is basically just an empty space with a couple broken buildings. They don't want people staying around here for long because it was a horrible bottleneck filled with horrible prowlers and that's all gone now. A new location has been added to the top of the map called Zoo Station, which is quite a unique area to fight and replaces the area which was unnamed, which had the only jump tower in the map. That jump tower is still there, but the new location overrides everything that was there before. Zoo Station has a twin POI called Seto Station, which is in the middle of the map where the Prowler Island was, giving some more looting potential and once again, stopping people getting stuck on that island and causing some pretty horrible fights. Echo HQ and Coastal Camp have been added at the bottom of the map alongside Devastated Coast. IMC Armories are destroyed now, so there's no Spectres or Smart Loot, but there is high tier loot and weapons in the destroyed buildings. And here is how the map has changed. Next, let's talk ranked. There's new promotional trials that you must complete when going from one division to another. So let's say you're gold one and want to go to plat four. You must complete certain tasks, which are usually like winning a game or getting top five placement with a couple of kills. If you fail to do that in five games, you demote. It's meant to stop ratting from being so successful, and I'm curious to see how it affects ranked. There's also new ranked banner frames now, which replace skydive trails, and you can party up with friends regardless of each other's rank difference. Completely unrelated, you can now throw hollow sprays while skydiving, and we've got cross progression. With this, you'll be forced to merge all accounts tied to the same EA account. The account with the highest level will keep its stats, whilst all other things like cosmetics, pass rewards, currencies, and heirloom shards will merge together. So if you have, say, a thousand crafting and 10 heirlooms in one account, 500 crafting and two heirlooms on another, you'll have 12 heirlooms and 1,500 crafting. The map rotation for Season 19 is Olympus, Stormpoint, and Broken Moon, but it will probably change halfway through the season. We've got a new battle pass, the reactive weapon is the Rampage this time, and we've got legendary skins for Rampart, Octane, and the Nemesis, and a few different epic skins as well. There'll be a Post Malone event on November 7th as well, just a week after launch. If you're excited to see Season 19, check this live stream link. I'll be streaming the moment Season 19 goes live. I'll see you there. Cheerio!